Hey there and hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Lillian Shabalala. It's Lillian Shabalala. No, it's, it's Lillian, Lillian Shabalala to you. <laughs> Shab, who's it? Lillian and Dan. Can we talk? La la. la. No, it's Lillian Shabalala. It's Lillian Shabalala. So, first of all, I do want to say please forgive me. I know there's a lot of shadows that are happening behind me and I know it's because of my lighting but yeah I'm not there yet I, I don't know <laughs> what to do I'm still trying to figure out the whole you know recording in the evening um, thing versus you know just recording with natural lighting recently got a light so I'm trying to see how to work with it please do forgive me but i do know just from being an actress that shadows are not good for some reason so please don't be irritated by the shadows that are behind me so sorry um so yeah thank you so much uh to everyone who has subscribed to my youtube channel and uh, if you haven't already i'd really appreciate it if you did um, you can like this video if you like the content or go look at my other videos and see if you like what I talk about and what I do. This channel is literally about um, sharing my life as an actress. Uh, I mostly do theater work, even though I have decided to stop saying that I'm a theater actress because I have done other work. I've done television, I've done film and short film that is and i do want to do more of that so i do want to start manifesting it instead of saying that oh i'm just a theater actress even though theater is my first love and will always be my first love um but i just do want to say that you know um yeah this is what it is this channel is literally about just talking about things like that it's a channel about um showing my talents and um sometimes i do monologues maybe i'll start doing um dialogues with other people i'm not sure but it's also just sharing my experience as a traveling actress because that's most of the work that i've done um traveling around the world and doing theater which is the best thing ever and my first love like i said so uh, today I wanted to talk about um, finances as a freelance actress, which is a very touchy subject. And I just want to say before I continue that there are children that are playing outside um, my yard and there might be some noises that you hear. Hopefully you don't hear them. But if you do, just know that it's just children being happy and living their best lives. Guys, let's give them this time to do that, you know, because we all know it does not last. And, you know, when you start being an adult, all these things come to play. But anyway, enough about that. So I just wanted to talk today about being a freelancer and saving or investing your money. And I know this is a very touchy subject, mainly because I feel like just as an artist growing up, I've always heard about so many artists that have, you know, that live their best lives and then they die and they had nothing. And I know there's two sides to that story. Just that's how I feel. As a freelance artist because I know the difficulties that we do have to experience as performers but I also know that you know there are times when we do perform and we do get lump sums and sometimes we spend them in a way that you know can be deemed as inappropriate or there could have been better ways to spend that money um so i just wanted to talk about being a freelance artist in this day and age freelance artists today can take advantage of all the resources we have you know be it youtube be it like the just the information the pool of information we have from the internet is so helpful today and i think it's things that previous artists did not have 
access to. So I, for one, know that personally in drama school, I went to drama school, it was great. Shout out to the Market Theatre Laboratory. Love you always. I learned so many things about being an actress. I learned so many things about, you know, maneuvering through this um, industry. And I've learned more things even after graduating from school because you never really learn everything in school, right? Sometimes you need to jump into the industry and start learning other things. Um, and I also remember, you know, there was a class that we had and basically a lecturer, it was a guest lecturer that was brought in from the SABC to teach us about applying, you know, for funding and applying for, um, you know, applying to put a show up, whether it be at the SABC or, you know, just applying through a production house and so forth and so forth. Which personally, I think is, it's not a show that I, it's not a class that I actually um, paid attention in. And I wish till today that I had paid more attention in that class. But that's another story for another day. We're talking finances today. But what I was trying to get at is that I don't remember us having a financial class that taught us how to possibly save our money when we do you know finally get into the industry and we act and we perform and we get our money you know whether it be weekly bi-weekly or monthly or you know get a lump sum from a production i don't really you know recall a class that was teaching how we can be smart about our money just generally as artists and I think that's one of the things that do play a big role in our lives today. You know, um, I graduated from drama school in 2011. So that was literally 10 years ago, you know, and only now, so many years after graduating, I'm only now learning, you know, about how to be smart about my money, you know. So... Yeah, it's a hard pill to swallow because I feel like if, you know, someone had taught me about saving my money in my early 20s, I would be in a much different place today um, because I started getting paid <laughs> for acting when I was 14 years old, believe it or not. I started out at community theater. Shout out to Susuga Swanke Drama Players. Uh, so literally I started getting paid in community theatre and then I went to um, Saturday drama classes which also uh, had an agency that I worked with where I also worked you know I took the classes but at the same time I was still working as an actress especially in theatre and then I went into the market theatre laboratory and then I went into the industry so I've been working you know, uh, especially in the theater business for a long time. So I wish that there was someone to teach me about how to handle my money, no matter how small or how big it was, you know, how large rather it was. And yeah, but anyway, it's never too late to start. And that's what this video is about. So if you are a freelance artist or you're a student or you are a person that, um, you know, is working for themselves, like I am as well, you know, a business owner, small business owner, or you work uh, through like part-time gigs, then this is the video for you. You know, I just wanted to encourage all of us to get into, um, culture of saving for our future as much as we are still enjoying our lives. So, um, I just want to say, you know, as much as I do feel like I needed uh, people to, or someone in my life that could have guided me in the right direction as a freelancer, I also feel like, you know, just generally our parents did what they could with what, with what they had, you know, as Ian Levanzan would say, they did what they could with what they had. And we also did what we could with what we had. So I can't blame myself for 
not saving or not saving enough, you know, in my early 20s so I can live better in my 30s. I did not know. Um, and that's that. Um, so I just wanted to talk about me personally. I started this journey of thinking about um, saving years ago. Literally in my mid-20s, I was thinking about, oh my gosh, I really want to save and 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 i really want to make my money work for me because i started reading different books like um is it the rat race i don't think that's what it was called but it was a book about the rat race and then i read um who moved my cheese and and i'm not much of a reader but i was like there was a time in my mid-20s where i was literally reading about um you know finances and i got back into it last year um when i started reading um uh, manage your money like a oh, do, grown up like a fucking grown up and that's you know those are the things that have like literally it's been lingering in my heart that i really wanted to use my money in a smart way but i haven't known how to do it and you don't know what you don't know so don't blame yourself you know, um, so I started reading up on all those things and long story short, about a year and a half ago, I approached a financial advisor. Um, he works through Liberty Life and I told him what I wanted to do. And at that time, actually, I remember as a freelancer, I was out of work. Uh, as an actress and I have I've, I've worked before you know I've traveled I've worked I've gotten lump sums of money and, um, and then I didn't have them anymore and not because I'm not a very I'm not I'm not bad with my money I'm just not great with it you know because I would be able to get a lump sum from a project and then uh, be able to you know spread it out through the next couple of months where I'm not sure if I'm going to be working as an actress or not. So I was not like going to be struggling, but then I was not going to be doing great because my money was not working for me and I didn't have multiple streams of income, you know, and so I needed to be smart about my money. So I knew nothing about buying shares, about saving through, uh, you know, other other avenues if that's the right word to use uh besides saving through the bank because for me in my head i was like okay the bank is the bank you know i mean they're there for a reason you have to trust them but i learned i learned later on in life that the bank is not the only you know it's not even the best place to save through especially if you are saving long term so i went through uh my financial advisor who's really great shout out to him um and he uh, introduced me to uh, unit trust, which is like a, a, we have like a low risk account. And I think the other one is a moderate to high risk account that I have with them. And he was just teaching me the ropes on investing my money. And at that time, I actually did not have like a, a, a pure good job to actually save properly you know like i did not have thousands to save into the unit trust actually it was the opposite because i had gone back to au pairing part-time in south africa and i hadn't au pair in south africa before i au pair in the states for a year uh but it's not something that i thought that i'd have to come back and do back home you know because i was out of a job at the time and so I decided to go and au pair, you know, I was like, you know, I'm just going to go do it. I have a car, you know, those are one of the requirements. I have the skills. I'm going to go au pair. And so I was au pairing with a family um, in uh, Waterfall in Midrand at the time. And I knew that I wanted to start my saving journey and my investing journey, but I didn't know how to. And so a friend of mine said to me, hey Lillian, how are you saving your money? It's a friend that I just talk to generally about everything and anything. And she told me about this um, mutual friend of ours that 
we both knew, but I didn't know that he had uh, uh, officially moved to becoming a financial advisor. You know, the last time I knew him, he was working at Capitec. Uh, but he was a guy that we grew up with. And so I reached out to him and I said, hey, this friend told me that you do this now. Is there any way we can meet up and talk about my finances? I actually don't have any finances <laughs> to talk about, but I'd like to talk about my life, you know, how, you know, we can talk about my future and, and, and. And so we met up, um, I remember we met up uh, in Kayalami uh, because uh, I was working in Midrand at the time and I met him while the kids were at school so like i would drive the kids to um school and then i uh, have like this little break in between uh and usually i'd go back home but then uh i at that for that break i decided to meet up with him so we met up we talked about my life as an actress you know because that's like my main thing i am an actress and i am a performer and i'm great at it and i know that but then I'm not always working as a performer. I don't want to lie, you know. Um, and we were talking about all of that, you know. Uh, we were talking about my finances. He was asking me questions like, so when you retire, what kind of lifestyle do you want to live? What kind of life do you want to live? And we were talking about it and how much that would cost me. And it was a shock to find out how much it would cost me to actually live the lifestyle that I wanted to, you know? And so I needed to start thinking about, you know, all these other ways that I had to find to make money. Um, and so we started that journey at a time when I was not even making a lot. Um, at that time, the only job I held at that point in time was an all pairing job. And I think at the time I was getting paid 8,000 Rand a month. It was 8,000 a month. Um, and I had to pay rent from that. And I also had obviously so that eight thousand uh no it didn't include transport actually they also paid the 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 um, amount of petrol that i needed to drive the kids around um with and yeah but then i at least did make some kind of money but i actually only worked for that uh family for like one or two months and then i got back into acting because i auditioned for something else uh, at the National Children's Theatre and then I got that job. So my agent uh, actually reached out to me about that job while I was doing the all pairing job. And I initially went into all pairing because I had been going to all these auditions but I was not booking anything and I needed money. <laughs> so um, I ended up uh, going back to acting, which was great. Um, had a rehearsal for six to seven weeks if i'm not mistaken and then we opened in that seventh week and as we opened the show COVID 19 hit <laughs> last year and so it was back to doom, doom, doom. And um, so that's what happened. But then I continued my journey with my um, financial advisor. So we kept going first and then um, moving forward, that's what I kept with them. But recently I've gotten into Easy Equities, which is actually an account that I also got last year. But I started out very slowly with them because I didn't know what I was doing. But I heard about easy, easy equities rather. And I heard about, you know, uh, the fact that uh, I could connect the app or the account to my Capitec bank account. And because at that point, I didn't really trust any external factors. 
I thought it might be an interesting thing to get into, but I did not understand it. So I was thankful that it was, I could connect it to my Capitec, you know, because I thought that might come with some form of protection. You know, if Capitec trusts them, then maybe I can trust them. So I got that come through them. And literally with Easy Equities, <laughs> I only um, invested like a, a mere hundred rand in the beginning. Uh, last year just to see you know what that thing was about and if you want to learn more about investing in easy equities and the companies and everything this is not the video uh, you can actually look at other videos on youtube where people are detailed uh, uh, you know and tell you exactly what to do when opening a, an account when investing I do that as well um, but this video is mainly about you know just being a freelancer and just to guide you as to where you can invest your money so with easy equities i i love that i can do my own research because i'm not a very financial person i've never been and i'm not a number i have not always been a numbers person let me not say i'm not i have not always been a numbers person even growing up like legit my sister had to do my maths uh assignments for me because i was not great um at it <laughs> Don't tell my former teachers. Um, but then uh, I've grown to understand a little bit about the, you know, buying shares, buying stocks, uh, trying to, you know, figure out what the trading game is, but also just figuring out how to save through that, even though, you know, buying shares is like... Um, might be a win or lose situation you know so that's why it's great to even go to like a facebook and follow you know the easy equities um uh page and there's also one called easy equities investors that i follow just to see normal people like me who have not invested before and to see what they're investing in or what they're excited about and then doing my own research on the companies then investing in them myself um or you know yeah and there's also time bank which i love <laughs> um and i love i love time bank because it's also a great way to save uh through them if you are saving for a specific goal uh as opposed to just trying to buy shares for the long run because what i've learned about like easy equities and you know uh, investment apps or platforms it's more about like uh you know investing money that you know you don't need right now and you will need in the long run but you'd like instead of putting it into just a savings account like i would have done three years four years ago two years ago it's about putting it into a place that it can potentially grow uh, aggressively. Sometimes you can even lose some of the money and then it grows again. And, you know, so that's a gamble you take. But it's a platform to, you know, just put the money there and let it do what it needs to do, whether you're, you're going to need it in the next three years, five years, 10 years. And that's what I see easy equities as i don't see it as even though it can be i don't see it as a platform where i want to just save money that i'll need possibly at the end of this year that's what i use time bank for they have something called goal save and i love their goal save because i see you know how my money grows there uh even though it doesn't grow drastically or aggressively but i know you know the capital is still safe and it is growing nonetheless so that's why I like to, you know, uh, do my goal saves on time bank. And, you know, the big thing is about starting. You need to start. So even if you do start with that 100 rand on easy equities or you start saving that 500 rand on time bank, 5,000 rand on time bank, uh, you know, goal save, not just putting it in the account, but creating a goal save for it. Um, it's better than just you know putting your money in a savings account where it's just gonna stay there and it's not gonna uh, grow you know um so i just wanted to say that just to encourage freelance artists to start thinking about saving you know whether it's for yourself 
for your family, for your children in future or the children you do have now and you know you want to start saving for them. There's so many companies that you can also save through, you know, if you want to open um i always encourage my personal friends if you want to open like an educational fund for your child um you know if you want to open uh or if you want to save on your own do some diy investments for your own child in the future like i don't have children but it's right now but it's things that i am thinking about right now you know Uguti, what do you want to to do in the future because just generally as a freelance artist and as a woman i know um once i start you know deciding that okay uh, maybe i want i would like to have children you know god willing uh at, at that time i might have to there is a period where i'm going to have to stop working and there's a period and i'd like to actually stop working in that period so i can focus on my child my mental health making sure that I'm okay, so my child can be okay, my family can be okay. So uh, those are the things that you can start considering uh, as a freelance artist right now and just being a woman in this industry because we all know this industry is not for the faint-hearted. You know, you need to gr go in and you need to uh, go in it aggressively. And there's so many talented people, you know, they always say it's always e like you're easily replaceable. So you don't want to be easily replaceable, just generally. Um, I mean, I guess it is what it is. But uh, even if you could be easily replaceable, at least you know that you have savings. <laughs> you know, that can uh, back you up and that a cushion where you can just hang on and relax and do what you got to do. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I hope this video did help, you know, especially for freelance artists who have been thinking about, you know, where do I put my money, especially when you get those lump sums and you have all this money and you're excited, but it disappears generally because, you know, you didn't plan for it in advance or you didn't know where to put it for, in order for it to grow. So I hope this video did help. And if it did, please like uh, share, subscribe, and let's have more conversations about this. I'm very excited about getting into more conversations about this because I do think we do need them as artists. So, yeah, I'll see you on the next one, and I hope you did enjoy this video. Mwah.